and I noticed that I started okay for every video I've started with the word okay so I'm starting differently here so this is the last video for this week that I'm gonna make and again this is talking about um, typographic compositions in particular um, so you know we saw a little bit of Mila Brockman here um, with grids and again sort of starting with the Gutenberg Bible um, traditional typesetting again keep in mind that right now we're working denotatively right so uh, pragmatic uh, sort of the exact definition of what something means. So in many ways we're working on the grid traditionally, but I want you to keep in mind, really, really, really keep in mind composition and hierarchy, contrast and tension in compositions and how you achieve that typographically. So as we sort of left um, the modernist and sort of the international style, um, what started to percolate particularly in Switzerland as well, again, was uh, sort of a more experimental approach to typography and sort of the beginnings of postmodernism. So this is by Wolfgang Weingart, who was who's credited as one of the designers that started pushing this. This is Weingart who studied in Basel and was teaching a lot of designers, would go on to teach a lot of other designers, and he started to start fun playing around with typography and starting the idea of my typography. Actually, the title of his book is My Typography, which is sort of his approach to typographic to typography and how he got into it. Um, it becomes more expressive, it becomes more connotative. So this first project, we're gonna start, we've started with denotatively, and we're gonna push it into connotative. So the second part of it after next week will be to push your um, compositions in a more expressive manner in which your personal take on the material starts to evolve. Um, we go into sort of like, here's an, an example of sort of a more expressive connotative uh, typographic treatment. This is from Emmy Gray magazine. The 90s became very important. Um, and uh, a lot of, of postmodernism is, is sort of works with philosophy and tenets of language and how we read language. Again, language being very important to typography because we are in, in essence sort of um, working with language and creating systems um, and compositions that help to articulate that language. Um, here is an example of Ed Fella, Ed Fella's work. Um, he worked in um, LA for many, many years after going to Cranbrook. Again, this is more of an expressive take on typography. You have to be engaged. And here are some examples of what I sort of deem these days as sort of really um, sort of uh, beautiful typography. It's more experimental. This is Swiss. Um, notice how um, clean, sort of in many ways clean, the, the composition is, but it's using different things. It's sort of using a framing device to frame. It's using a title and then but the body copy down here is justified but in a very clear way. There's a hierarchy here. Um, other examples, for example, here's an example spread from the Walker Art Center magazine redesign. Notice how the elements, if, I know there's a photo, and we're not using photos in this class, but I want you to notice how well this type is set, the graph of text, and how all the typographic elements work together to create a composition. Yes, this is a spread, two pages how about that in a magazine, but I want you to pay attention to, to, to the use of the elements to tell a story, okay? Um, another example that I have for you here is, this is from another Swiss publication. Um, Notice, again, it's a spread, but I want you to see individually each side of the page, how it's used, how the type is clearly said. Notice the space in between each paragraph that allows the reader to understand that there's space here. There's different thoughts coming on. There's some display type here, um, uh, sort of to help you. It's, it's a catalog for a festival. Um, here's a Swiss poster, sort of a more contemporary take on a Swiss poster. Um, notice the large type size, notice sort of how this information is running on the side um, and start thinking how, you know, the type, the size here helps to create the contrast between this information and this information, right? Um, here's a menu from a restaurant in, in, in London called Canteen. Notice how the, the sort of headings, even though it uses two different type sizes, helps you to understand the categories, right? Here's the hierarchy up here, and then you come down. 
right? But notice the type size here. Notice how the type is very easy and beautiful to read. Um, and again, when I say the word beautiful, I want you all to be careful about that because beauty is a lot about aesthetics and we can get into trouble because what's beautiful to somebody is not to another. So keep that in mind, but notice how they use the italics here as well to differentiate between levels of information. And that's really important when you're doing hierarchy and in your composition. Um, here's from the New York Times Tea Magazine. I took this shot from one of the pages. Notice how the composition, yes, it's from a magazine. I took out the right hand side of the page, but I just left the type. Notice how they use this element here, this sort of subhead pull quote kind of to get you into the graph and this middle cap here. But notice there's some sort of tension here. And notice that this doesn't start in the middle of the page. It sort of starts up two thirds. So there's this sort of tension between all this down here and this white space which is always really beautiful. I'm showing you another screenshot of another page of that catalog from the Swiss catalog. Notice how they use the um, display type to sub differentiate between events, but the body copy stays the same on the reefs of the lines. Um, this is from Plot Magazine, which is a German magazine. Notice how um, the graph of text down here, how they use space, the subhead, there's a, diff there's a contrast between the serif and the sans serif here, um, and there's a contrast in size. So the size helps you to determine what is first, second, third, even fourth, fifth, for example, the page numbers. There's, foot there's marks here for the photography. There's sort of like credits here. So think about that. And then the last thing is this record. This is from inside a little booklet in the record that I have that has this small booklet that sort of gives you, this is an interview in many ways. So look at that, one, two, and then each answer is detailed in a particular coding system, A1, A2, A3, and so forth and so on. And notice the letting here is larger type, so you need more let, a little bit more letting. It's nice and it flows easily. So a lot of detail, and that's the key thing that I wanted to say for this week. So here's your homework. So your homework next week is, you're going to use the same exact content that you used this week, okay? And you're going to generate five unique posters. They're different. They're now versions of the first poster you made. One of these versions can be that first poster you made with edits, okay? They are 11 by 17, horizontal type only, no flip type, no upside down type, no diagonals, nothing. Horizontal only. One typeface, two sizes maximum. Okay, so play with contrast, extreme contrast. Use a four column grid as your basis. So if you have a four column grid, it could become four one column grid, four one columns, or you could play two two columns, or one large three columns, and then one single little column on this side, which you could use for different things. So start thinking about that. So focus on precise formal type detail. Focus on your typographic skills, compositions, hierarchy. Look at your details and make sure you print these before you post them so you see what is happening. Keep in mind, each of these posters, they are posters, not flyers, not just some page that you put type in. Each poster is unique. It is not poster one, and then I'm going to make five, four other different versions to see if I get it better. No, I want you to start experimenting with compositions, right? So here we go back to principles of composition and think how you arrange and organize your type, but also how you set it, the formal aspects of setting typography. So that is your challenge. So you have five unique posters. You need to post on the Tumblr by Thursday evening, email me a PDF with all five of them. These posters must have your name in the content. Don't just put your name at the bottom like you're signing it. I want you to incorporate your name as part of the subject of the content of the poster. Excellent. So I look forward to seeing your posters and um, I am looking forward to hopefully soon we're going to be able to do a Skype call, all of us, so we can all actually have a conversation about this stuff. That'd be great. Um, any questions, you can feel free to email me as many of you have. All right. Have a good week.